know what they're trying to do, and we have to try to stop. We have to work our way out of it. economically. That's why I want to cut the spending, work away. But I want to take care of the people who have become so dependent on government. Even though it would have been a better way of taking care of them, you take the elderly on Social Security. It was a contract. But we can't honor that contract if we keep spending this money overseas. So I would take care of those people who are on Medicaid, Medicare, and the people at home on Social Security. But you can't do it the way we're doing it today. If we continue to do it today, you'll have the economic calamity, you'll have a runaway inflation, nobody's going to have anything, you're going to have violence in the streets, and that will be very, very danger. We're not immune from that. What I see is happening is we're seeing something very wonderful slip away from us, something that we have all benefited by. You and I and our families and for years, even today, we still have a lot of apparent wealth. But our wealth today is all based on debt. If every, all the bills had to be paid, there wouldn't be much wealth. What if we had to pay the 15 trillion national debt? What if we had to pay $3 trillion to the Chinese? You know, it, it's, uh, it, it, you can't have it based on debt. But what has happened is we had a great constitution, we had maximum freedom, we had a continent that was special, had a lot of natural resources protected by the oceans, and we got soft. We had so much wealth that we then, as a people, concentrated more on the wealth than we did on our liberties. And we got careless, and the liberties have slipped away, but our wealth will slip away as, as well. If you don't have true liberty, the wealth cannot last. And in the last hundred years, it didn't happen. Yeah, I like, I do my share of, of criticizing the president. I've already done that this evening once. But let me tell you, it's not this administration. It wasn't just the previous administration. It's been decades of bad economic ideas and bad foreign policy and bad monetary policy. That's where the problem is. special interest. He did much better by having a high-paid lobbyist and going out and producing a product. Besides, producing products became more difficult because over-taxation and over-regulation of the monetary system, all the things that we have done to chase so many of our businesses away. So it became then such that lobby in Washington became the most important thing. So the lobbyists control things. Medical, medical reforms, when they have impact legislation, public under Democrat, Guess who gets involved? It's the lobbyists, it's the corporations, it's the medical companies, insurance companies. It's not people aren't represented. They might tell you that, but you're really not represented because in a free society, you don't have the government involved. It works differently. Just think of this effort to give everybody a house. That ended up with everybody they, they wanted to give a house, ended up losing a house, and the people on Wall Street get bailed out. What about this effort for the federal government taking over education? They've been doing that for a good many years. I think it was a bad idea. I don't even think we should have a Department of Education. <laughs> but the results, the results have not been good because we became more dependent on the government. The government would take care of us and provide for us, whether it's medicine or education. So, in, in the old days, the old days like when I was in college and medical school, I was able to work my way through school and it wasn't so expensive. But today, how difficult it is it? It's so expensive and it's hard to get a job, so it's hard to do it. So the enticement is become an indentured servant to the government, borrow the money, and owe the government money for years and not be well enough trained to take some of the jobs that are available today. There's a lot of jobs available, but they're technical jobs and we don't have the training. So we're graduating these thousands and thousands of students, and right now the students owe a trillion dollars. They owe more money than our credit cards. So it's a failed system. This is what I think people are realizing in what's happening in this campaign. People are giving up, and I think it's a healthy attitude. Don't depend on the government. The government's supposed to protect us and forgive us our freedom and let us take care of ourselves and not be dependent on the government.
not to mention, I think it's been detrimental to our liberties, and it's a home, it's a war much nearer home. You know, we have a we have some problems on our southern border. I know that's a long way off from Iowa, but we live down here in Texas, and we, we have a problem on the borders. In the last five years, it's estimated that 45,000 individuals, probably mostly Mexicans, have been killed, you know, on the border. So there's a border war going on down there. But here we are spending hundreds of millions of dollars losing our troops over trying to decide where the boundary line is between Afghanistan and Pakistan. I think we should be more concerned about our own borders here at home. And I, my argument on illegal immigration, if you didn't subsidize it, you'd have a lot less of it. And, and that's what I'm about. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but the border is interconnected with another war that has not played well for us, and that's the war on drugs. I think the war on drugs has been very detrimental to our personal liberties and an excuse to invade our privacy and do many of the things that are unnecessary and doesn't solve the problem. Drugs. The real war, modern war drug, came up in the early 1970s. We've spent like trillion, over a couple trillion dollars on the war on drugs, and there's still a lot of people using those drugs. <laughs> a lot of times they're using a lot of prescription drugs too, more so than even the illegal ones. But the prohibition of alcohol didn't work. Alcohol is a very dangerous drug. But there's something that uh, we, we should think about on this. If it, if it isn't working, uh, why, are, why are we doing this? And the one basic principle I think is wrong is alcohol is a very deadly drug. And um, if a person becomes an alcoholic and asks for help, we show a little empathy, they treat them as a patient, we have centers where they go to, but if somebody is caught using a drug that they have made illegal arbitrarily, you become a criminal. And I think, maybe it's because I'm a physician, I'd like to think about the drug problem more as a medical problem than throwing people in prison for using it. The freedom is, is a wonderful experiment. It hasn't been tried all that much. Most of history has always been run by tyrants dictators and kings and pharaohs and, and even today I fear that our government is getting more tyrannical there's more authority, we don't really have property rights and they don't even need search warrants to come into our houses so we're losing we're losing a whole lot but freedom to me is so wonderful because people use freedom in different ways, you don't have to decide what your religions are there was a time where the government decided what the you know, the major religion be, but we don't believe in a theocracy, we shouldn't be domineering. People understand this pretty well, that you can pick and choose your religion, you can pick and choose your intellectual materials, but so often what we have done is anything we want to put in our mouth, it seems like the government has to give us permission. So if, if, our, if we're expected to deal with our eternity and our intellectual life, why aren't we responsible for our own bodies? It makes my own decision. The encouraging part is that a lot of people are listening and a lot of people are excited about some of the things we've been talking about tonight. Talking about where America went wrong, the greatness of our Constitution, the greatness of our of our traditions, what sound money is all about, what a sensible foreign policy is about, that we don't have to give up anything. We don't have to give up our defense. And for you to be safe, you don't have to give up your liberties. This idea that you have to give up so much of your liberties to be safe, that's nonsense. You don't have to give up any liberties to be safe. Others give, oh yes, it's bad, we have to do all this. Uh, 
but you're going to have to sacrifice. Now, if I can, if I can wave the wand and have my way and have enough people come into the promise with me and we can change it, and I give you back your liberty, uh, your life is your own, your responsibility is your own, give you back your freedom to act as you choose, give you your freedom to keep what you earn, tell you where you can spend your money and use your property as you see fit. Why is that a sacrifice? That's not a sacrifice. That is what you need. There's a lot of excitement going on, and um, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged about next week. Hope everybody comes out yeah. and, and votes. Yeah. As important as the election is, and what we've dealt with, and I've been doing it for a long time, but uh, the uh, interest is growing out of great need because we need we need some answers. But uh, this is. Um, this is something that is an intellectual fight. It's an intellectual. We have to know what we want. We have to be convinced that freedom works. We have to be convinced that we cannot depend on others and we don't have any right to tell other people what to do. And if we did that, if we used that golden rule on interpersonal relationship, we ought to know how to use the golden rule on international relationship. If we don't want other countries doing anything to us, we shouldn't do it to them either. But because, because of the crisis that we're facing, there's a lot of independent thinking. People now consider themselves more independent and belonging to parties. But where I really get encouraged in two areas. One, with the students. The students, the young people, high school and college, and recently out, the young military people, they know what liberty is all about, and that's what they I forget about them, but I might place myself in that group. Some people of a little bit older age that have been around, and they remember a little bit about what it was like to have more personal freedom and personal responsibility. Some of them have been around, and they've sort of dropped out. They haven't been voting. They haven't been interested because they've been stunned too many times. The candidates say one thing, and they do something else. And I call the political remnant. There's always a remnant in society, no matter how bad the society. Just think of what it was like uh, in, uh, in communism. They had the Solzhenitsyns. They were part of a remnant that held the truth together. So, so there is a large number of people, and I think they're coming out. They're coming out of the woodworks. They're saying, you know, maybe, maybe we see a chance of a real change. So... And it's, it's galvanizing, and I think it's getting very exciting. I don't think for a minute it's going to be easy, but I know one thing. If we don't put our mind to it and work our way out of this, and we just go along with the status quo, status quo and continue to do things we're doing right now, believe me, it's worth the fight because that would be very bad. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here to help. Ask you for some help for. But we don't need the status quo. We need to restore the greatness of America, the greatness of American freedom, and the wonderful country that we live in. Thank you very much.